I've been trying to create passive income streams since I was 21 years old, this elusive fountain of fortune, but most of them have bombed, but a few have completely changed my life and allowed me to retire by the age of 30. I am making about $40,000 a week of passive income. I can promise you that most of the work was never passive. And in this video, I'm gonna share my passive income streams to inspire you to create your own and retire whenever you want. Before we dive into the ideas, let me address a couple things that I think all these other people are full of crap. You don't have to do any work. Like, zero work, zero work, zero work. What do most people have wrong about passive income? It is never passive. Significant wealth comes from active income. Conserving and maintaining your wealth comes from passive income. So what am I saying with that? I think some of these YouTubers and a lot of these people are, are completely delusional. They're like, I'm gonna do one thing one time and be rich forever. Doesn't work that way. Maybe in Dogecoin world, for everyone else that's in reality, uh, it's not that. So what do I mean? If you're doing real estate, it takes a lot of work to buy a house and then get a property manager and you might make a little bit of money, but it's not gonna scale significant wealth unless you get a lot of houses or a lot of properties. Let's take another example. Say you wanna get dividend income. That's great, but you have to have a lot of cash to make significant dividend income. Where does the cash come from? Yes, active work. So that's why I've always tried to discourage people from imagining they're gonna get super rich from passive income. The other thing that's really critical in passive income is look at the return on your time. So a lot of people talk about ROI, which is how much am I spending and how much do I make from that? Return on time is actually almost more important, which is you put in work once, and you get a huge return forever. You can make an ebook, you can make software, you can do real estate, you could do YouTube. These will all create different income streams, but you have to be mindful of, with the time I have available, which in my lifetime will create the greatest return. Think about that as you're choosing the different activities you're spending your time to make wealth for yourself. All right, now that we've cleared up some of the basic ground rules about passive income, let's go over my passive income ideas and streams so that you can start yourself this year. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. I love you guys. Uncle Noah wants to send you more videos to help you on your business journey. First off, start a business. So if you look on the Forbes 100 wealthiest people, almost all of them have started a company and most of it has just done one company. So if you wanna be really wealthy, start a business. Uh, so I started Sumo Group in 2010 in a basement in San Francisco. We have AppSumo.com, Sumo.com and other products we've built over the years. So I am making over $20,000 a week in, in income from that business. Is it passive? There is a CEO, Eamon, who's done an amazing job running the business and there's an amazing team who runs it, but I'm still involved and I like being involved. The reality here is if you wanna make great wealth, you do need to get something going and make it significant and then bring on a team to help you scale out that business. So if you're thinking for yourself, hey, I want $20,000 a week or way more than that, how do you get started today? So first off, find a product or business that someone really wants. So I built 20 different companies over many years and most of them did not work. For this business, it was a culmination of, I love marketing, I like deals, I still do, and uh, daily deals or Groupon was a really popular model at the time. And so that trifecta hit where we've been able to build AppSumo.com into the number one digital marketplace for entrepreneurs. So how can you, AKA the underdogs, get started today? Think about this. Most of the most successful companies in the world are pretty much still the same as when they started. Let me clarify. AppSumo, when I started in 2010, I would go find the best tools for entrepreneurs and get a deal on it, and I would send an email and promote it, and we made money. That's pretty much still what we do today. If you go to Facebook, it's still connecting people today. If you go to Google, it's still searching. Yes, there's other product lines that have been added. So what I'm actually trying to encourage you, if you're thinking about starting a business, what is something simple that you can validate within a weekend to see if people really want? I think people waste too much money and too much time in trying to get their business to start. Another thing in starting your business, besides building it once and then doing it forever, is what do you have an advantage in? So in real estate, if you've been doing real estate for a while, I can't beat you in that. If you've been doing YouTube for five years and you're willing to do crazy things and all that stuff, I can't beat you in that. If you can TikTok and do all that dance crap, I can't do that, you're gonna beat me. Internet marketing, I've been doing this 20 years, I'm pretty good at it. So it's, I'm gonna have an advantage there. So when you're starting a business, are you a great chef? Are you great at sales? Are you great at marketing? Whatever it is, are you a great developer? Go and take advantage of that in actually starting your business. The other thing you wanna consider in starting a business is what is your total available market? If you're doing a cookie business, there's a lot of billion dollar food companies. That's actually a pretty sizable market. It doesn't matter how big the market is, it matters that you find something that actually people want and you stick with it for a very long period of time. Check out best business ideas, we'll have it in the description below. Give you a bunch of business ideas that are popular this year. Second passive income stream that I have for myself is crypto. I know every other video has talked a lot about it. I'm just gonna talk about my specific thing that I do. Uh, I use BlockFi.com uh, and I use Coinbase.com. So in BlockFi right now, if you move USDC, which is dollar coin, they are giving you an 8% return. I have almost seven figures in that, uh, which means I get $80,000 a year or monthly income of, six, 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 six. that just sounded weird, or a weekly income stream of around $1,600. Uh, you can also stake your Ethereum in Coinbase for a 6% return. 
So the thing I like about this is that they raised a lot of money, they take that money and go lend it out to a bunch of other people, and now I can get $1,600 a week, and I literally don't have to do anything. The way I was able to accumulate a lot of the crypto and the money that I've actually been able to use for this is that I did small monthly investments for the past five years in this space. So I did $500 a month for the past five years. Uh, and that's built up millions of dollars uh, in these crypto accounts. And I have some of it uh, through USDC that now is providing really high interest as well as some interest coming from Ethereum. There's a bunch of other videos about how to invest in BlockFi. I'm not gonna get into the details of this, but if you wanna learn more about my crypto portfolio and exactly what I've done with it, uh, there's a video called Behind the Scenes of My $2 million Crypto Portfolio. We'll have it below in the description. All right, number three, start an online course or community. This is stuff you've probably heard about before. We started a course called monthly1k.com. It's still available. It's how we've started AppSumo. In the past 30 days, it has generated $1,500, which is cool. We haven't actually really had to do a lot of work because we built it years ago. I think there might be one person helping on customer support. Thank you guys for doing that. We started this course years ago because one, we wanted to create income that was more controllable by ourselves. And two, I was tired of people asking me how to start a business. At peak, we made a million dollars a year from this course. But here's what's interesting. We were promoting it all the time. That was literally like a full-time job. Uh, and so that's $80,000 a month, but it took four people to do that and it was a lot of work. The hard part is actually getting customers and making it passively recurring revenue. Uh, so what I'd recommend is put it on the appsumo.com marketplace, appsumo.com slash sell, where we promote it for you. And then think about how do I actually get customers consistently? Is it gonna be from YouTube? Is it gonna be from podcasting? Is it through blogging? Is it through partnerships? So think about how can you have consistent amount of students coming in your course uh, to be able to have consistent revenue. Another thing you can check out is check out behind the scenes of a $5 million a year online productivity course uh, from Tiago Forte, the link below in the description. It's always weird to point down because I'm not wearing shorts right now. So next up is index funds. So I use Schwab, uh, you can use Vanguard, Betterment, Wealthfront, whatever type of service. So my monthly dividend income uh, is around $8,293.78 or around $2,000 a week, give or take. Uh, and that is from over a million dollars in assets. So what is an index fund? So instead of buying one stocks, it buys an index of a bunch of different stocks. And some of those stocks kick off dividend income. Uh, dividend income is a return for holding their shares. How can you get started with index funds? Just get started today. So you can either buy index funds. Uh, so I do the SPEM, SPDW, SPLG, and SPSM. So those are the, the four different index funds I buy. The other thing you can look at is which stocks actually have dividend. So one of my favorites, because I'm more boring as an investor, is Verizon. They have a great dividend. I don't think they're gonna go away anytime soon. As well as AT&T, uh, as well as Apple, actually has dividends, plus hopefully the stock appreciates in the long run. But the biggest thing with index funds and any of this stuff is that there's many strategies about growth stocks versus value stocks versus small companies. But I would just say, if you wanna get a little bit of passive income from this source, just get started every single month and keep doing it consistently for at least 10 to 20 years, and it'll build up to be a significant passive income stream for yourself. Number five, you can actually build your own software. So at Sumo Group, we've built sendfox.com, kingsumo.com, tidycal.com, which are some of our most popular AppSumo original products. And those are generating over $60,000 a month uh, or over $15,000 a week. We are actually not super actively having to maintain it. There is developers who are great and there's support people around it, uh, but it's not as much more as when we originally put it in creating the software. Uh, there's two different business models that we've used in approaching this. One is a lifetime deal. And you can promote any software you have on AppSumo.com, number one marketplace for entrepreneurs. Uh, so with KingSumo.com, it's giveaway software, or SendFox.com, it's email marketing software. We are tired of paying monthly subscriptions and really overcomplicated software. So we just built a product we wanted to use for ourselves. And then we're like, why don't we just sell it forever uh, on AppSumo.com? Why do a lifetime deal? Because a lot of people don't want to pay every single month for a service and as well. You don't need to. Uh, and so we thought that'd be an advantage for us. And it's worked out really great uh, within those business models. The other model you can do is a SaaS model, which is software as a service or a monthly annoying subscription. We do have that with sumo.com, which is our email marketing pop-ups. Ones that are like, give me your email address, please. We haven't had as much development on that, but that's still generating six figures of income every single month. Uh, even though we invested a lot of that earlier on years ago. So how can you get started if you don't know how to code today? Great question. Uh, you can use Google Spreadsheets. You can use a lot of the no-code software. There's a lot of different tools on AppSumo.com that you can actually use today. My suggestion is see if you can actually help people and make something they want. And if you can, then turn it into software. Everyone always does it the other way around. You're probably not gonna listen to, but maybe one of you will, which is don't go build it first. Go get the customers and help them. And if that works, then turn it into software. You can actually check out below how we launched a $30,000 product in 20 days. Uh, so you can see behind the scenes of how we launched TidyCal at our company. Number six is invest in real estate. Uh, so I do have an Airbnb. It's in Austin, Texas. Hopefully we'll have a screenshot up here so you can actually see the place. Maybe you'll come stay with it. So about six, seven years ago, I got really excited to try out Airbnb. I bought the place for around $300,000. Uh, and now it's kicking off about $1,000 in profit a month. 
that's cool. But the reality is, is that I was like, maybe I should go buy more of these houses. That's nice. And I have a property manager who deals with everything. So I literally, it's literally like not really even in my mind. The reality though is a thousand dollar a month is great, but by creating software and actually scaling up Sumo, we can do a thousand dollars a day in profit or, or more. So if you're thinking about getting started in Airbnb, my suggestion is don't go try to buy a place. Go actually talk to people renting their houses and say, hey, can I actually manage your Airbnb and see if I can rent it for you? Or go split a place with a few people that will actually de-risk yourself so you're not putting up all the capital. How do you find your first property to actually get? The way I do it is like, what place would I wanna go stay as an Airbnb? So in Austin, there's these one condos. And I was like, man, if that ever came for sale, I would love to have as an Airbnb. Came for sale literally about a week later. And I got it. Well, by the way, if I wasn't in tech, if I didn't do online marketing, if I didn't know how to start businesses, an Airbnb approach would be really interesting. Some of the problems with this though is that everyone else can do it and everyone else already knows about it. So how are you gonna get some significant advantage? You probably won't. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity for you to do it, but it's just be mindful about when there's more people that know about it, the profit margins get squeezed down. You can see in the video below as well, how much money do I make for my Airbnb? If you wanna see a little bit more behind the scenes of how it's happened. Number seven, start a blog or newsletter. So I started okdork.com in 2000, which is bonkers. And I think I make around $250 a month from Amazon affiliate things. So that's like $60 a week. The thing that's interesting about this is that I started blogging and I have books on there. I have products on there. I have things on there that actually go to Amazon affiliate that create income. The thing that's interesting is that it's not consistent. So I've had thousands of dollars a month where I had like vacuums and products I recommended. And today it's like barely 50 bucks a week. So it's not tremendous. It's still nice to have a free dinner from it. The point here that's really key is you want passive income that's gonna be consistent over a long period of time. Like the dividends, hopefully like Airbnbs, hopefully like the crypto stuff and the company. So if, if you're not consistent with your content creation or figuring it out, it can get squeezed. And as well, if you're doing affiliate income like this, Amazon can change their rates, which they <gasps> did. So if you're thinking about getting started, one thing you can do is go to Amazon affiliate, go search online. What are the top affiliate payouts? And then that's actually the kind of content you can start creating. I've never been a fan of making a lot of money through affiliate income because I just don't think you actually get that much for the return on your time you're putting in. If you're thinking about doing an email newsletter and you can stay consistent with it and do it weekly, I actually think that's a really cool way of making income because you can directly tell people, go buy this product. Check out below uh, email marketing for beginners from zero to 100 subscribers on our channel to learn more about that for yourself. Again, I would also recommend sendfox.com. It's a tool we built for me because I was tired of using all the other services that were overpriced and complicated. As well, remember the law of 100. So if you're doing blogging, if you're doing a newsletter, do at least 100 of them before you even think of giving up. And I promise you, you'll be a lot further ahead than you imagine. Create and sell a digital product. So I've created two books. One is about getting fired at Facebook. Second one is what are people doing with money that they don't want to tell us about? I make around a few hundred bucks a month from doing that. So I don't know, like 50, 60 bucks a week. So I literally just wrote books. One was therapy because I wanted to talk about my time at, at Facebook. And the other one was, hey, I want to learn about what are rich people doing that they're not telling us. Uh, I put it on Amazon, which doesn't actually promote your book a lot. And today it's doing some sales, but nothing significant. Uh, I would actually recommend putting, if you're an entrepreneur, putting that book on appsumo.com slash sell, uh, the AppSumo marketplace to actually get some promotion. There are other places out there, but that's the one I, I think works and I can actually recommend for you. So what should you actually write about if you wanted to start today? What do you get paid for in your day job? What have people paid for you in the past before? Uh, that's where you can create a digital product around. Uh, the bigger and harder part is where can you put it that you're gonna get consistent income from that? So in terms of passive income, it looks like I'm making almost $40,000 a week, which is kind of bonkers. Uh, but the bigger thing is that for probably about the first 15, 17 years of my career, I wasn't really making crap. So the key thing for you is not whether which one of these is gonna work for you, it's that you need to start today planting some seeds to get going. So by the time you're 30, or maybe even earlier than that, uh, you can do whatever the hell you want. Retiring sucks, no one should retire. It's just, how do I then spend my life doing whatever the hell it is I wanna do? Maybe it's making videos, maybe it's building software like I get to do with AppSumo.com. Whatever is for you, I wanna help you accomplish that. If you like this video and you wanna hear how I actually retired at 30 years old and what it was like, check out this video right over here and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Just do it, do it. My mom wants you to do it. I love you and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.